Surprising new photos of Comet 3, Iatulus, taken during last week's total lunar eclipse, have left astronomers stunned. The images, captured by astrophotographers Michael Jaeger and Gerald Remen in the dark skies over Namibia, hint that the mysterious interstellar visitor may be turning bright green as it approaches the halfway point on its journey through the solar system. The emerald hue appeared against the backdrop of the blood-red eclipse moon, when Earth's shadow dimmed the skies enough to reveal the comet's striking glow. If confirmed, this unexpected transformation would be the result of the comet drawing closer to the sun, releasing hidden chemicals from its ancient, frozen core. 3. Iaitis is no ordinary comet. Roughly 7 miles wide, 11 kilometers, it was first detected in early July, hurtling toward us at more than 130,000 Bilafia, 230 odes, from beyond the orbit of Jupiter. Astronomers quickly realized this was not a native resident of our cosmic neighborhood. Instead, it is an interstellar traveler, passing through the solar system on a one-way trip. Most likely, it was ejected from a distant star system within the Milky Way, and has been drifting through space for longer than our solar system has even existed. In short, 3 Iaitalus is older than Earth, older than the Sun, and now for the first time crossing paths with humanity. As it moves closer to the inner solar system, the comet is heading for a flyby of Mars next month before reaching its closest approach to the Sun on October. The increasing intensity of solar radiation is forcing more ice, gas, and dust to erupt from its core, giving it a growing tail and surrounding coma, a cloudy envelope that makes comets glow. But the new green coloration has sparked curiosity and debate. Could it be a sign of rare chemistry hidden within the comet, only now revealed after billions of years in interstellar exile? Astronomers point out that this would not be the first time a comet has turned green. In early 2023, the so-called Green Comet, CO 2022-E3, dazzled sky watchers worldwide. In 2024, the explosive Devil Comet, 12P Pons Brooks, also shimmered in shades of emerald, while another comet, Swan 25F, displayed similar hues earlier this year. Typically this coloring is caused by the presence of dicarbon, a molecule of two carbon atoms bonded together that glows green when illuminated by sunlight. But here's the catch. So far, spectroscopic studies of three II tellers have not detected any trace of dicarbon. This has left scientists divided. One possibility is that the molecule was buried beneath thick layers of ice, only now melting away as the comet warms. Another is that the green light comes from an unfamiliar chemical cocktail mimicking the classic cometary glow with alien chemistry never before seen. A V. Loeb, the Harvard astronomer known for his bold studies of interstellar objects, has suggested a different culprit altogether. In late August, the Very Large Telescope in Chile's Atacama Desert detected cyanide in the comet's coma. According to Loeb, cyanide could also produce a green glow, one that might explain the strange photos captured during the eclipse. For now, the mystery remains unsolved. 3. Iatilus will soon slip out of view as it passes behind the sun from Earth's perspective, making further observations difficult. It will reappear in a few months, shortly before reaching its closest point to Earth in December, when it will still be about 700 times farther from us than the moon. Until then, astronomers and sky watchers alike are left waiting wondering whether this ancient wonder is simply another green comet, or whether its strange glow is the signature of something far more unusual, carried across the galaxy by a visitor from beyond the stars. For months, amateur astronomers around the world had been tracking three Atlas, the third interstellar object, after Amoa Moa and Boris of Datto capture its unusual phenomenon that changes every week. But the story began with an amateur astronomer named Leslie Peltier watching from a hillside in northern Chile. He had been tracking the intercell object for weeks, using a 40-in research-grade telescope equipped with a cryogenically cooled camera's camera and a high-precision tracking rig 
tied into NASA's ephemeris data. Nothing unusual at first, just a fast-moving body from deep space, its green tail glowing from carbon monoxide and nickel emissions, discovered only the week before. But in mid september everything changed. On the morning of September 19th, at exactly 2 a.m. UTC, his screen showed something that made him freeze around the main emerald streak of three atlas. Nine smaller points appeared, dim but distinct, moving in perfect lockstep with the main body. In his images they looked like fireflies around a lantern. He posted the frames online on several astronomer forums, but at first most professionals dismissed them as noise or cosmic rays. Over the next 48 hours, however, the James Webb Space Telescope Hubble, the Very Large Telescope in Chile, and the Kayak Observatory in Hawaii all confirm the same thing. These are instruments designed to measure the faintest galaxies at the edge of the universe, so they do not hallucinate. But what made it so terrifying was the eformity. Spectral reports showed all nine objects shared the same speed, same trajectory, and the same strange green-tinted tail as three atlas, confirming they were not from our solar system. Until that moment, every professional and amateur astronomer had seen only one object. Now there were ten. Spectroscopy further revealed that all nine carried the same metal-rich signature, nickel, cobalt, and high-temperature alloys like the three atlas and the same unusual carbon monoxide driven glow. But what was distinguishable from three atlas was that Earth was about one-tenth the size of three atlas, yet apparently powered by a nuclear core twice as powerful. The math alone made scientists nervous. Three I atlas had already puzzled them with an estimated 10 gawatt power source inferred from its thermal profile and tail behavior. But the nine companions seemed to pump out 20 gawatt each a figure that defies physics. A fusion reaction of that scale inside such a small body would destroy it. Even our most advanced reactors cannot match that power to mass ratio. Our biggest power plants weigh thousands of tons to produce only a few gigawatts. These objects are no larger than a city block, yet each one radiates 20 gawatt, enough power to light entire nations locked inside a moving fragment from deep space. The idea that something so small could hold that much energy isn't just unnatural, it's terrifying. When astrophysicists at Caltech and MIT tried to model it, their supercomputers repeatedly crashed. No matter how they adjusted the parameters, temperature, pressure, plasma density, the equations refused to converge. You simply cannot fit the necessary fuel or containment field into an object that's small, without exotic metals or impossible confinement pressures. Doing so would require technology far beyond anything on Earth. Some theorized an exotic fission-fusion hybrid. Others speculated about antimatter or dark matter catalysis. But all agreed this isn't standard comic chemistry. But the real question on every observer's mind was how this happened so suddenly. Four of the largest telescopes around the world had been watching 3i Atlas for months, while spacecraft like NASA's Juno at Jupiter, the Parker Solar Probe flying close to the Sun, and the Bi Colombo mission on its way to Mercury were all gathering data from space. Alongside them, dozens of amateur astronomers worldwide were also tracking every movement. Yet none of these eyes on Earth or in space had seen even a hint of the nine companions before they appeared. According to a Loeb's team at Harvard, the nine objects appeared at 2 a.m. UTC on September 19th, and the event itself happened in only 0.1 milliseconds. In observational terms, they just blinked into existence. To put that into perspective, a human eye blink lasts about 300 milliseconds, a camera flash about 5 milliseconds. This was 30,000 times faster than a blink and a 100 times faster than a flash of light from a strobe. That kind of speed is why no telescope or spacecraft managed to capture the instant they appeared. The event was simply too fast for any sensor we have to photograph in real time. It might seem impossible for us, but in deep space, 
These timescales are almost trivial. Gamma ray bursts can release more energy in a few milliseconds than every star in our galaxy combined. Cosmic rays tear through planetary orbits at nearly the speed of light, about 300,000 kilometers per second, 86,000 millimeters per second, fast enough to cross from Earth to the Moon in just over a single second. And even the biggest black holes can slam together and merge in as little as a thousandth of a second, unleashing gravitational waves that ripple across the cosmos before we can even react. So Harvard astronomer, a lobe, immediately invoked the mothership hypothesis, a large interstellar craft shedding probes as it nears its targets, which in this case is our solar system. In interviews, he said one thing was certain. These probes are not random. They appear only after entering the solar system. Their power cores are denser and hotter than the main craft. They may be designed to approach worlds while the main body remains farther out. In the worst case, he warned, these could be autonomous drones mapping our system or to take something valuable from our solar system. But others, like Miyo Ko, offered a more natural explanation. He suggested that 3 Atlas could be a comet-like object that collided with a massive interstellar rock, because 3 Atlas's body is much stronger than normal. Moving at over 60 kilometers ease, the impact could have shattered it into fragments that retain the same speed and trajectory. In this scenario, the smaller pieces are super dense chunks of the original body absorbing its kinetic energy. But a lobe responded that in such a case, the fragments would not be powered like miniature reactors, no known rock, and split into nine pieces, each generating 20 gort. Nor would the green tails match perfectly. And then came the second shock. Another interstellar comet, Swan R2, was approaching from the opposite direction, 100 times more massive and luminous than 3 Atlas. Its tail spanned 212 barrels on the sky, dwarfing even the largest comets in history. It would reach perihelium in the same week as 3 Atlas this October, essentially creating an interstellar traffic jam around the Sun. But what's so shocking is that trajectory records showed an object on a similar trajectory every 2,200 years. Some UFO researchers say Swan R2 might be coming to save us from three Idus, acting as a kind of cosmic protector. Others insist the opposite, that both Swan R2 and three Idus are arriving to take something valuable from the sun, and that their meeting near Parhelium is no coincidence. Still, others argue that if Swan was truly hostile, Earth would already have been destroyed during Swan R 2's previous visits, 2,200 years ago, when humanity was completely defenseless. Historians point out, Chinese imperial archives mention a heavenly dragon in 2,000 Babylonian tablets, describe a splitting star that herald great upheavals. Medieval European chronicles around the year 1000 record a green visitor with a tail like a banner. If that cycle holds, we are due again now. Yet, despite the mountain data and growing public fascination, NASA and ESA have stayed almost completely silent, issuing only the briefest statements about ongoing observations and repeating that there is no evidence of any threat. Even as tension builds around the world, inside the Pentagon and European Space Command, emergency briefings have begun. Leaked memos show contingency plans, ranging from interception to planetary defense scenarios. China's National Space Administration has reportedly repurposed its heavy lift Long March 9 program to design a high-velocity interceptor. The European Space Agency is dusting off blueprints from its defunct Donut asteroid deflection mission. Even private companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin have been approached about rapid launch platforms for reconnaissance probes. Despite the public excitement, official agencies remain guarded. NASA has refused to release raw James Webb spectra, citing data verification. ESA declined to comment on ongoing planetary defense activities. Even the White House issued only a one-sentence response. We are aware of the situation and monitoring it. This silence feeds paranoia.
If the evidence is this strong, why isn't the world preparing? Some insiders whisper about silent mobilization, spacecraft quietly being retested, defense satellites brought online, radio telescopes moved to higher alert. Lowe has formally petitioned the UN to convene an emergency session on interstellar object policy. He has gone further, calling for a global task force and openly suggesting nuclear readiness not to attack but to signal capability. If these are probes, they will be studying our radio spectrum, he says, and they will know our defense posture. We should show we are not passive. He recommends placing Earth's nuclear powers, the United States, Russia, China, France, and India on a coordinated alert. Spacecraft from multiple nations could be dispatched China's TN-13, Europe's HERA mission, NASA's upcoming Dragonfly, and even Japan's Hayabusa next could be adapted as high-velocity scouts. But the problem is time. When Amar Mio Mio passed, we had no ready interceptors. With three Atlas, we've had more notice, but the appearance of nine additional bodies collapses the timeline. We are not prepared for 20 guards of unknown power barreling through the inner solar system. October, loom. Both interstellar objects will swing past the sun within days of each other. Ordinary people looking up at green streaks before dawn feel both awe and dread. This isn't like a blurry UFO video, it's in the databases, the telescopes, the peer-reviewed journals, it's real, it's coming, and no one knows what it means. It raises a storm of questions, not just in the halls of science and government, but among ordinary people everywhere. Will Swan or two collide with three Atlas? Will the nine probes break formation and approach Earth or the Moon? Will governments finally acknowledge the possibility of an extraterrestrial presence? Or will October pass with nothing but two spectacular comets blazing near the Sun, leaving scientists to pick over the data for decades? The truth is, no one knows. The stakes have never been higher, but the data has never been stranger. This is not a science fiction movie. This is real astronomy in real time, happening above our heads. Two interstellar visitors, one with nine mysterious companions, are on approach. Their energy signatures defy our physics. Their behavior defies our expectations, and the window to prepare is closing. As a Loeb said in his last press conference, the universe has finally knocked on our door. The question is, will we open it, or will we hide? So, what do you think is really happening out there? A collision, a rescue, or something else entirely? Tell us in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe to follow the next updates of Space Mystery.